Hi, I'm Doug, your tech support representative here at Atlantic British. And in this video, we're going to touch base on a common issue that shows up on the LR3s and the sports, which is the alarm going off by itself on an intermittent basis. And the most probable culprit, or the Y item that shows up the most, is the hood switch. And what happens essentially is the hood switch can actually give a false sense or reading to the uh, alarm system indicating the hood's been opened and the alarm just simply goes off. Now we have done a previous uh, video on replacement of just the hood switch in this configuration, which is the, the pop-in design. Now these are the ones that uh, are, are equivalent to the original. And uh, yeah, down the line they could actually probably still recreate the same issue. So what Land Rover has done is change the design so that the switch is now incorporated into the latch assembly itself and you would replace the whole latch assembly. Now I'm not saying that this wouldn't work for you. This, this component we're still leaving on our website. You can still get just the switch assembly and we actually have a previous video you can refer back to to show how to install that. But what we're going to do on this is we're now going to show you essentially how to install the new design from Land Rover if this is the way you opt to go. Now what I would do too is before changing the switch over, take a good look. If you've got a lot of rust buildup and whatnot in that latch, then it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to change both the switch and the latch. So we have an LR3 here. We're going to show you essentially how to change this over. Alright, so on the LR3, you've got four push tabs along the top of the grill. And the sport is going to be similar, except on the LR3 you have the squeeze tabs on the bottom as well. Whereas on a Sport, Sport is going to have two tabs that run down into rubber spigots on the bumper. When those you're just going to lift up and pull out. But on the LR3s, you need to release this lower switch. Okay, so grill off. And this is essentially this is the component we're going to be replacing. Relatively easy to get at, as you can see, it's right in front of you. And what we're going to do is start on the back side. And we're going to grab the electrical connector that goes into the switch itself, which is our culprit for setting your alarm off. And there's just a little squeeze tab right on the top of the connector housing. I'm just going to squeeze down on that, give a little wiggle, and pull that right off. So now we come back around to the latch itself. We grab a uh, number 30 Torx drive. And I just happen to have one that's got an extended end on it. So it just makes it a little bit easier, but you can do the same with a, with a short one and a, and a six inch extension. And what you essentially have on this as well is a release cable on the bottom right hand corner, which will be easier to disconnect. Now we're going to back the bolts out, and then you're going to see in the back that there's a shim. Don't lose track of that shim when you take the bolts out completely. Set that there. You always want to make sure you put back in what you take out. So you want to save that shim because that's going to need to be go be reinstalled. So if you look on the bottom, you'll see that this is the switch that we're going to be replacing. What we're going to do is we're just going to simply break that off there. We'll push in on the release mechanism so we can pull the cable up and out. We can actually just pry that out of there. There's a little rubber grommet. There we go. So now we're we're off. We've got this disconnected. We'll set this aside. And then reinstalling actually is fairly easy. I'm simply going to squeeze that grommet back in where it was, and the cable as well. And some of these are a little stiff, and you may want to use a pair of pliers to pull these into place. But you want to make sure that they do latch in. If they aren't fully latched, you don't hear that click. What may happen is once you get everything reassembled, it'll fall out on you. Then you won't be able to release. It won't release this side of the hood. So we have that back in place. We're going to put our shim back in. Remember the shim, the opening faced up. And we'll just run one bolt through there first. Just 
just to hold everything in place. And then we grab the other. Now, because we're putting a new component in, we couldn't mark its location so that we end up with the same adjustment we initially had before we took it apart. So you may need to loosen these bolts and change the location of the latch so that it latches properly. So what we're going to essentially do is start with pretty much a center position because we can go right to left a little bit and we can go up and down. And we'll let it start with a full down position. We really don't need to lock these down quite yet. We just want to snug them in. And we'll plug our electrical connector back in. And then we'll move the switch out of the way. And what we're going to do essentially then at this point. You're simply going to lower, close the hood, make sure it latches properly, make sure there's no looseness or bounce. If that is good, pop the hood, raise it up, tighten those bolts down, and then we'll just pop the grill back on and we'll be done. So we're going to move our light and we're going to do a test fit. All right, so with the grill out, you can't see, you watch the loop or what they call the striker up under the hood, and you're going to lower that down. And Ideally what you want it to do is hit dead center in that opening in the latch, which looks like we're pretty good there. Alright, so the latch latched. And we didn't feel any hard rub or a knock or any banging, so we know we're aligned pretty well. Make sure we release. All right, so that looked pretty good. So, we're gonna lock these down. It doesn't have to be real tight, just a good snug fit because you don't want them backing off. And that's that. That's how you replace the latch. Now we're just gonna pop the grill back on and we're set to go. And this should essentially stop your phantom alarm from going off in the middle of the night, which I'm sure your neighbors would appreciate. So whether you decide to replace the whole latch or if you decide just to do the switch, which as I said earlier, you can refer back to the uh, video that we did with the installation of her switch only. Give a call to any of our knowledgeable salesmen at 1-800-533-2210 and thanks for watching.